mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is fairest on the wall? This is magic. Magic of the moon. always been brought fear to the practical. In Orthodox churches, we were not encouraged, when I was in the congregation, to have roses or mirrors. Rose petals, when they fall, bring sweetness to all. Lilies smell horrible, but they don't fall, and they are old. They keep themselves to themselves. They die on the stem, on the altar. Roses mean romance. Lilies, virtue. Mirrors show one oneself. This might bring vanity. I always remember the Fairchild family with the little Lady Vera, this is written in the Victorian age, looked in a mirror, age five, vanity, her hair caught fire, and she was burnt to death, which was God's punishment for vanity. This was just given to children then. But stained glass was in order, at least in high church circles. When my brother and I created a temple of Isis, we chose another way. Our temple was a labyrinth, and at each stage, through mirrors or indoor windows, you could see when you had been, where you had been, and where you were going. Going one way, left was past, right was future. Go the other way, you see something completely different. I do remember the astonishment of one of our members when he thought he was alone, looking in a mirror, and then the reflected people began to move in and out. This was an indoor window. There was no encouragement to secrecy in our temple. We had the back door open with the began, so anyone from Clonic Hall could look and see what we were doing. We always have uh, our ceremonies uh, from 12 noon in the afternoon to the afternoon. Even our outdoor windows were triple. On each side were mirrors that showed moby strips of endless reflections. Gone forever. One child put a coin in front of a reflection, hoping it would proliferate. This was magic, ma magic, mirror magic. You could get a storm in that way. Recently, I became enthusiastic about painting on mirrors or putting painted cloths over them, which could be lifted. Why did I do this? Possibly this sprang from my own experiences as the goddess of all mirrors, the moon goddess. You may never see her face. She turns away. My first lunar experience was in vision at night on the 18th of October 1977. I'd been to Greece and Crete a year or so ago. I found myself at the end of a temple facing an altar. Behind the altar was a pale veil that loosely covered the whole background. Upon the altar was a silver stag's head with eye closed facing left. I found myself holding up my right arm and saying, I salute the altar. The stag opened his eye, which was dark, and looked at me. It reminded me of the haunting black eyes I'd seen on Greek icons in Greece. From behind the veil appeared pale women's arms, gently waving. I advanced up the aisle, and the stag eye closed, and I stopped. I held up my arm and repeated the words. I salute the altar. The stag opened his eye and looked at me. Then he closed it. Curiously, I felt his other eye hidden from me was golden. The arms once more appeared through the veil, women's arms beckoning me. Then I heard a voice saying clearly, If you can bear it, do this for the third time. So I approached the altar, lifted my arm and spoke. I salute the altar. The stag's eye opened and looked at me. It closed, and the arms waved to me. With this, a woman's voice spoke clearly. What is your intention? I felt that I was the first of many who were following me, and this was a very ancient mystery. I answered, to reconcile the religion of Egypt with the tradition of Avalon. The intention was accepted, and I was directed to leave by the right. I felt that...
tragic others were behind me. My next experience was not only in vision because it affected my physical body. This was on the night of the full moon, on the 9th of March, 1982. I found myself in vision lying flat on a couch next to a friend, an occultist. Before us was a very tall woman. I once saw Donna and she also gave the appearance of having a different proportion to us humans, even seven to eight feet, much taller and beautifully proportioned. I could not see her face, but she turned from me. I associated the colors of her filmy gown with the many colors of the moon, silvery with a small touch of orange. She stopped and picked up a bottle containing saffron-colored oil with a sphere as stopper. She bent and anointed my friend's forehead with this, thus forming a large circle. I was disappointed when she turned away, replacing the bottle, but I thought, oh well, Vivian has been at this much longer than me. But then the goddess picked up another bottle, and I thought it contained a violet-colored oil. She took out the stopper and bent over me. She made a full circle of the oil on my forehead, but still I could not see her face. Now comes that sudden switch when vision impacts on one's waking mind and body. I was fully conscious of the fragrance of the oil, which was both powerful and exquisitely beautiful. I lay awake for about ten minutes, then I got out of bed and went downstairs. It was ten to twelve. From the castle balcony, looking over the yew walk to the southeast, we could see the full moon. There was the full moon, and all this time I was experiencing the onrush of electric-like power flowing through me. First, I felt it, had felt it in my room, down the left side of my brain. When I entered the balcony, the power reached up my shoulder blades. Finally, it was like a white shining shower from some celestial fountain as it flowed through my whole body from the top of my head to my feet. Romantic search for the immortal beloved in the mirrored realm of vision. I used the concept in our wedding rite. The maid speaks. Some adore the beloved in many lovely forms. Other, others honor the many in one loved face, God speaks. To find the other, you need to look within. Gaze deeply in a well, and you will find your twin. Now a wise woman speaks. Look around you and you'll find the other. Gaze in a mirror. You will see your brother. 